Hey guys, Lou here from LT's Custom Woodworks. Welcome to the shop. Today is a rainy day, but another day, another dollar. Today I am starting the uh, trundle bed frame build. Now this, this bed is for two toddlers, uh, three and four years old. And so it's gonna be a, a small bed frame, but if you don't know what a, a trundle bed frame is, it's basically in the same family as bunk beds, I guess you can say. So you have bunk beds are stationary. You got one at the top, one on the bottom. You either have stairs going up on either way. Sometimes you can have them switched over this way for the bed frames. A trundle bed frame is basically a stationary bed and another bed on the bottom on wheels that rolls under the top bed and in a closed position it looks like it's just one bed with a drawer on the bottom it's more of a cleaner sleeker look uh, less space and uh, that's what I'm going to be starting today I didn't sit in front of my computer and design plans on SketchUp I'm gonna wing this um, I it shouldn't be that hard to to do without plans uh, I know that's a no-no in the woodworkers world especially with the cost of materials one screw up and that can be quite costly but what I'm gonna do for, I'm gonna play it on the safe zone and what I'm gonna do is is start the bottom bed frame first and then I will take the top bed frame and build around the bottom one that way I know things are gonna work properly so I'm going to be using three quarter inch pine plywood and the I got the mattress sizes are 28 inches wide by 52 inches long so for the bottom of the of the platform of the bed I'm gonna make a half inch wider on each side basically I want a, a one inch all the way around in total so a half inch wider on each side bigger than the mattress that way you can tuck in sheets uh, blankets and so on and so forth now let's say this is the bottom platform of the bed where the mattress is sitting I have to make a face front now you don't necessarily need a sides and back on that one but you know you're thinking of the the kids they're just gonna push that mattress right off that bed frame and do whatever right the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make the bottom of the the platform of the bed and then for the front face now if, if I were to put the front face on top of the bed frame it is extremely strong that way if I were to screw this this way what's going to happen is is kids are going to stand they're going to sit on it they're going to jump on it it's going to break off it's not as strong so if I do it this way, it's sitting on top, it's never gonna break off, but you're gonna have this. Now I can edge band that. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take these, the top piece and I'm gonna hog out. This is three quarter inches thick. I'm gonna hog out, I don't know if you can get a good look at this. I'll move up closer. Okay, so I'm basically, I don't know if you can see that now. I'm basically gonna hog out three quarters of an inch up and I'm gonna go half inch deep and what's gonna happen is when you have this bottom of the bed frame and I put this on top this is going to drop down and it's gonna edge band that automatically so you're gonna have the strength of this sitting on top and I can screw from underneath and it's going to drop down and cover that and that's going to act as the edge band to cover that side it's a little bit more work but it's it's um i think it'll be more feasible to do it this way than the other way i'm, I'm not crazy about having that kind of a look if you can see that so i'm going to start off with the bottom platform it is, uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut my width first and then I'll cut my length later. We got 28 inches. If I'm gonna add a half inch on each side, it's gonna bring it up to 29. And then I'm going to have the front face hang over another half inch. So I'm gonna bring it to 29 and a half inches. 
and then on the back side I'll go 30 inches to be on the safe side. So I'm going to rip one 30 inches wide and then the sides in the back I'm going to cut it uh, 30 inches wide 52 for lengthwise I'm going to make it uh, 53 inches 53 inches long So I'll get my sauce start, uh, set up and start from there. So the front face of the bed frame on the bottom, I'm going to make it 8 inches. By the time you drop it down at 3 quarters, you're going to get about 6 and a half. The mattress is 6 inches, you're going to get about an inch and a quarter higher than the mattress, which is good because when it's in the closed position, you won't see the mattress, it won't be shown. So I'm going to cut this one at uh, 8 inches and then I'm going to cut the sides and the back at 3 inches. Okay, now that I got the pieces cut, I'm going to cut the bottom of the base for the mattress. I'm going to cut it at 54 inches long. The front face, which is going to be this one, at 54 inches long. And then the two sides, the back I'll do last, the two sides are going to be at 29 and a half inches long. Uh, tape that way you don't get any chip out when you're cutting with the saw especially when you're going against the grain so the tape prevents that you get a nice way cleaner cut if you do it this way Okay, so what I ended up doing was is I ripped the sides down an inch. I took an inch off of it. I had originally cut it at three and then I stood back and took a look and it was a little high. So I took it down to two inches. So I shaved an inch off. Now I'm going to set my saw up to 
cut three quarters up and a half inch deep. So I find the easiest way and best way is to edge band your pieces before they go together. It's a lot easier, the corners come out better. Uh, and that's just the way how I do it. But I'm going to edge band the top where it's going to be visible at the top of the bed. So it's going to be this piece, this piece, and the front face, and then the back piece which I still have to cut. So the way I edge band is I use my file to cut and then I use sandpaper on the edges. So I bevel my my um, my file to a five degree angle. That is the, the um, the secret to getting a nice finished edge is to just bevel it at five degrees and then sand it with sandpaper. I do have an edge band cutter, but I never ever use it. I used to use it all the time at one time, but I don't anymore. I find it that uh, this way you get no slivers, it's clean cut and dry, and it's quick. And I basically use the, the edge of my file as a cutter. And it cuts the excess off. And that one is done. And I always center my edge band. I don't keep one side flush and then you only have to cut the one side. I never do that because it never turns out that way. It's best to let it overhang on both sides and then you can cut to your finish. Now this is, uh, this is being painted. It's not being stained or anything like that. It's just getting a, a two coats of primer, two coats of paint, and it's gonna get three coats of pre-cat lacquer with a low sheen. Um, what color it is, haven't decided yet, don't know. Uh, I still gotta find out. Now these are the wheels I'm gonna be using, and I'm gonna put four underneath. I'll screw them down into place, I'll mark everything out, and then I can start pre-drilling to start securing my skirting in place. So, I'm going to position these
three inches from the edge in. I'll do the same thing to this side on all four corners. And then three inches by three inches is what we're going to set it at. So I'll set my square up. And bingo bango, Bob's your uncle, Christine's your aunt, and Bill's your sister. Clean, cut, and dry. I'm going to find my screws for this. See how well these do. And I think this might be the answer right here. Now I'm not going to put swivels on these, uh, just a sheer fact that you got to think uh, what a toddler would think. Uh, the minute this thing can swing around, they're going to chump on that and they're going to go gallivanting all over this room. So I'm just going to use, uh, not even, I'm not even going to put a brake on these yet. Uh, if there is an issue where they're going to be pushing it in and out back and forth and stuff like that, I'll have to put a lock mechanism where the bed will slide out and there would be a pin or something that locks it in place. I'll have to figure something out for that later on if that's an issue. Right now these are just typically a non-swivel casters so these once they're positioned they can't move around which is kind of better because if you put them on a swivel when you go and push it back under the bed you're going to start banging into the bed a lot so I figure this is uh, this is the ultimate way to go. I'll try it out. And if it doesn't work out, I can always change the casters, right? It's not the end of the world. And that is that. Now we're ready for, I will put the front face plate first. And I think I'm going to pre-drill on this one. So. This looks pretty good. So I will fill the pilot hole. That way we can countersink the screws. And that is in place. We're going to check for the other sides now. We're going to do the sides in the back the same way. And that is the cat's meow. Okay, now that I got all this completed, now the next step is I'm going to start doing the glue up for the uh, top bed, for the footboard and the headboard. I'm gonna use some two by six pine. I'm gonna glue up uh, four pieces together and then I'll let that dry overnight. I will um, unclamp it tomorrow and then cut it to size. So in the meantime, I'm gonna cut this two by six and we'll do the glue up for that.
and I make sure that the glue is spread evenly. You get a better bond that way. Especially if you were to turn it on the lathe. If you're going to round off the legs or whatever you're, you're doing for a design. Okay. So I'm going to let this sit overnight, let it dry up, and I'll take it out of the clamps tomorrow and start milling these legs down and get them all cut up and ready to go. I'm going to cut it here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, hit the notification bell so you're aware of every time I upload a video, you will be notified, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.